Hello everyone, this is Burak Yolga. I'm the founder of Forescape Digital Freight Forwarder. Today's video, I will be explaining you how to choose the best Amazon FBA Freight Forwarder for your business. As you know, 2021 and 2022 has been incredible challenging year for international shipping as well as inventory management. And I have been running an international logistic company more than seven years and we have been specialized on Amazon and e-commerce shipments from China last four years. So, I know that it's really difficult and sometimes complicated to make the decision to deliver your products to the freight forwarder that you never met or worked before. So what are the best criteria, cons and pros that you will be choosing the best Amazon FBA freight forwarder? So hopefully this video will help you and you will make the best decision for your business, for your brand and hopefully this is going to help you a lot. So let's start. In today's video, I will be explaining you and giving you five most important criteria how to choose the right FBA freight forwarder for your business. Number one, the most important criteria is to work and choose the right freight forwarder directly and do not use your supplier's freight forwarder. There are four more important tips on this topic. Number one, you won't be able to communicate with your freight forwarder directly. It needs to go through your supplier. Would you able to actually source product from your freight forwarder instead of knowing the supplier? I think the answer is no. So why would you ship a product with your supplier instead of the freight forwarder directly? Because their core business is not actually international logistics. The supplier knows how to produce the product and how to deliver the product to the freight forwarder. So this is very important to work with the freight forwarder directly, not through your supplier. There are four important topics as I mentioned. Number one, the communication. Number two, the inco terms. So sometimes the freight forwarder and supplier might speak to each other, but the freight forwarder will not know the exact supplier's trade terms and they may give you the wrong quotation. And if you have any problem regarding the pricing, you will have a problem with your suppliers and generally suppliers, they wash their hands off and then you will need to pay extra duties or extra cost to deliver, to receive your product. As you see, one of my friends in the past had this similar problem and the supplier actually confessed that they did not know the freight forwarder's trade terms, so the product stuck in the custom almost two months and it had to ship back to China. So this is really important. The one more thing is that actually tracking the cargo. You will never know where is your shipment. And this is a big problem if you're selling on Amazon, if you're in the fourth quarter or if you're selling a product for an important day, you will not know how to manage your PPC, you will not know how to actually turn or off your coupon codes because you will not know when your shipment is going to check in. So this is something like really important. And the most important thing is actually also the documentation. You will always need to work with the freight forwarder directly to make sure that your product is actually clear to custom with the correct HS codes. So these are the most important actually facts why you should not work with your supplier's freight forwarder and find your own freight forwarder directly. The most important second criteria in my opinion is the choosing the freight forwarder who can help you with different shipping as well as fulfillment methods. As you know, Amazon and e-commerce world changing day by day. And more importantly, we need to play the games according to Amazon or Walmart or Etsy's rules. So you need to prepare your business, choosing the right freight forwarder to help you with different type of shipping processes and fulfillment processes. For example, are you sure that your freight forwarder actually can help you with cross-border shipments? Or more importantly, whenever you have less limit on Amazon FBA fulfillment centers, can they support you with the FBM? So this is really important. In my experience, last seven, eight years that I lived in China, shipped from China and sourced from China, is that businesses need different type of services every single day. So you need to make sure that you're working with a freight forwarder, more importantly, have the right licenses such as NUOCC or have the, the right WMS in their warehouses that can help you with the change of your needs or the expanding of your business. For example, there are sometimes customers of ours that they have stranded inventory on Amazon FBA's fulfillment centers or they have stranded inventory in their 3PLs. So instead of waiting that product to stay in the ground without selling it, you should be able to actually ship that to different marketplaces. For example, from US to Canada, US to Mexico, or UK to US. So you need to make sure that you work with a freight forwarder who can cover the entire 
e-commerce Amazon world's requirements and expansion methods that who's actually following up this crazy world very carefully. As you know, one of the most important thing is actually working with a freight forwarder that who has an experience with Amazon FBA. There are a lot of freight forwarders in China that they actually have been delivering to Amazon FBA. However, most of those companies that are based out of China, they do not have local presence in the destination, such as in UK, Europe, or US. So in my experience, working with a freight forwarder who has presence in the different marketplaces, that who can help with the local delivery, this is the right way to choose and work with a freight forwarder. Amazon, as you know, have different type of labelings, such as FNSKU, Walmart has new also labeling requirements, the carton labels and pallet labels. Amazon fulfillment centers have changed their rules in 2022 to receive the products. So you need to make sure your freight forwarder have actually the experience of working with the Amazon deliveries and Amazon freight forwarders so they can actually coordinate all the details together. So for example, in, in the past, I've seen some examples that the shipping cartons were very thin. So the product actually received by Amazon Fulfillment Center very at the end with damage. So nobody really wanted to be responsible from this damage. So you need to make sure that when you communicate with your freight forwarder, when they receive the product in, in their China warehouse, or if, they, if, if you work with the companies from Taiwan, Korea, Japan, it doesn't matter, or Vietnam, you need to make sure that your freight forwarder has a responsive responsibilities with your suppliers to make sure that when they receive the cargo, if packages are wet, if the packages are broken, if the packages are damaged, instead of shipping all the way to Amazon, they need to return it back or they need to repack the products in their local warehouses. Otherwise, Amazon will not be responsible for the products that arrive damaged and they will not be actually checking in. And you will actually have an inventory you think they are ready to sell, but Amazon is not ready to receive them. So this is really important to make sure your supplier and freight forwarder, when they communicate, they understand the requirement of Amazon FBA fulfillment centers and make sure that you inform your supplier and freight forwarder to follow these rules. This is very, very important. Criteria number four. As I mentioned, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages working with the freight forwarder local market. As I mentioned, in China, there are a lot of small and mid-sized freight forwarders that can help you with your international shipments. However, one of the most important things that you should be careful about is the, the time difference, the communication, and the transparency. What I mean with that is if you have a small shipment that you need to do like ARDDP or CDDP, you need to make sure your freight forwarder provides you the container number and bill of lading. This is a very common actually mistake that I see that the buyers they purchase 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar products. However, they do not have any evidence or any information in their hands or paperwork, more importantly, to claim if product is damaged, if cargo lost, or they do not know where is the shipment. So this is very important. So you really need to request from your local freight forwarder to provide your bill of lading and container number. The second thing is actually the time zone, time difference. If you base out of UK or US, by the time you wake up, your freight forwarder almost goes to sleep or almost goes to off the work. So it's really important for you to understand and communicate with your freight forwarder to make sure that they have a local presence. If not, you need to find a way to track your shipment or when you ask them when your shipment is going to arrive or what's the latest status, make sure that they give you an accurate information, maybe the name of the container maybe the name of the container vessel, the number of container, or the bill of lading number. So this way you can actually have something in your hand. Otherwise, I've seen in the past that freight forwarder actually misses the, the departure time of the, the shipment and the container rolls up to the next container vessel and the freight forwarder sometimes do not want to tell the truth. They just say there's a delay or sometimes the shipment is hold by the custom or there's an inspection. Instead of freight forwarder is actually telling you what is really going on with your shipment, they just say, oh, there's a delay. There's a delay because of that. There's a delay because of that. We have seen a lot of delays last year in, in the world, such as the congestions at the port, origin destination. Sometimes the truckers are strike. Sometimes the COVID requirements in China. So I've seen a lot of different ways of the delays. However, there's a way to track your shipments. There's a way to track your containers with the container number of the or bill of lading number. So it's really important to ask the freight forwarder all the documentations and make sure that you can actually work with a freight forwarder in the local time zone 
that you can also get the instant an answers whenever you need. The last but the most important maybe is the communication and technology of Freight Forwarder is supporting you and helping to grow your business. Sometimes you work with the Freight Forwarders that they are maybe not good with the language, however, it's not the end of the world, right? However, to use the correct communication channels, so most of the companies are using the QQ, WeChat, Skype in China that they do not have the access to uh, sometimes emails or sometimes WhatsApp. So before you actually book the shipment with your freight forwarder, you need to make sure that if there's an emergency, you need to understand who you can actually communicate with the team. When I lived in China, I have visited a lot of factories, the warehouses, and freight companies. By the time I go there, I have seen a lot of people actually about to quit their jobs, or maybe they're pregnant, or even they go to a long business trip that you may not be able to reach out to the, those people. In the beginning, it may sound like, oh, that's like a, that's okay. You don't really need to know exactly uh, immediately maybe when your shipment is going to arrive. However, if there is a big delay, one, one week, two weeks, sometimes one month, two months, you need to make sure that you have at least more than one people in the company that you know. You can always make a video call to understand the size of the company. You can always get their business license. You can always ask their business cards and you can also ask what kind of events they're actually attending globally or if they're member of WCA or JC Trans that you can actually check the credibility of these freight forwarders. So today's video, I try to explain you the most important five criteria, in my opinion, to choose the best Amazon FBA freight forwarder for your business. If you like the video, please do not forget about liking the button below and more importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the most important topics regarding international logistics and supply chain and sourcing from China and all around the world. So thank you and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.